Welcome everyone. In case I am new to you, I'm Safrina from Feng Shui and Prosper. And today I want to talk about the three types of energies. Now for some of you, you've already heard me talk about this over and over and over again. But for many of you, this is probably, you know, maybe you just stumbled upon my YouTube page, my Facebook page. Um, and uh, so this is a very important topic to talk about because it's not, in terms of the English speaking feng shui information out there, it's not talked about enough. And that is why I keep harping back to the three types of energy, three types of energy. Now, you guys are probably thinking I'm gonna talk about the heaven, earth, and mankind luck. I talk about that a lot as well. But today I'm going to talk about the permanent. Oh, let me know if you're seeing the mirror image here. I just realized. So the permanent, the annual energy, and the monthly energy. Let me know if you're seeing the mirror image. <laughs> Even if you're seeing the mirror image, that's fine. The main thing is we know um, permanent energy, annual energy, and monthly energy, and what this means in your feng shui practices. Now, mirror image, oh no, okay. So in post-production, I'm gonna have to flip this. So for most of the English speaking information out there is they just talk about, especially the one about the eight aspirations, right? There's no mention about the time factor at all. This is totally devoid of classical feng shui because true feng shui always has that time factor brought into the calculation, into the formulas, into the theories. So if you are currently following what I call fast food feng shui, and how many of you guys follow fast food feng shui until, maybe up until you found me, right? I don't claim to be the only one to talk about classical feng shui, but many of you, I am, for many of you, I'm the first one to, to even mention it. Time factor is really important and how the energy constantly is moving based on time. Now, a fourth uh, word that I want to throw out there for you guys is the word period, okay? When you guys go back and watch the replay, hopefully I'll flip it back for you, flip the uh, wording back for you guys, is the period. Now let's start from almost the beginning. In Flying Star Feng Shui, which is the main school of Feng Shui that I use, every 20 years is one period. There's, there's nine periods, all in total, nine periods, and every period is 20 years. So after nine periods, that's like 180 years, and then it goes back again, right? The, the calculations, the formulas, just keep repeating over and over again. It's a cycle. So right now we are in period eight, which, it, which started in February 2004 and will end in February 2024. That's 20 years. We are going into period nine. And so if you're doing feng shui without taking into consideration the period of your space, you are already dead in the waters where feng shui is concerned, okay? And where my school is concerned, we determine and there's a lot of confusion around the period. Some schools say you base the period uh, based on when it was first, when the building was first constructed. Some people say, okay, the building's first constructed, but the period is really should be when the first tenant moves in. So those are the two main ones that I know of. For my school, the period is based on when you move in. Now there's a couple other variations to that, but this, the basis of it is based on when you moved into the space. So then once you know the period of your whole, most of us now are in period eight, right? Some are in period seven, some are still in period six. And we will talk about, you know, the, the older periods hopefully soon. But once you know your period, 
then you get the calculation of the permanent energy of your home. So the permanent energy is the energy that's locked in. It's the feng shui foundation. It's the energetic blueprint that is locked in based on my school, based on, it's calculated on when you moved in. You guys got that? And this is where, unfortunately, if you want to properly address the permanent energy of the home, I, I really wish there was like a, you know, a, a book that would address everything, but, and, and I have wanted to try to write a book that would address everything in feng shui, but it's just not doable. It's just tombs and tombs and tombs of books. But really, if you want to know the permanent energy of a home, the best way is where Flying Star uh, Feng Shui is concerned, the best way is to try to learn the 81 combinations. Now, again, many different schools have different interpretations of the 81 combination, which is the combination of the water star and the mountain star. And every 81 combination has a different meaning. Again, different schools have a different analysis of that, therefore different remedies of that. Um, but this is, the, this is the one that is the hardest to find, I believe, in terms of uh, books, in terms of online information. Um, so there's definitely a gap in knowledge there in terms of the permanent energy. Now, then what is um, more abundant, especially around Chinese New Year, is the talk about the annual energy, right? The yearly energy. Oh, we're going into the year of the dog. What is the energy there? We're going into the year of, you know, we're going right now, we're going into, we're transitioning into the year of the pig, right? And so you're gonna see all of these articles, all of these books about the uh, yearly or annual energetic changes. And they'll say, oh, this year, like for instance, 2018, this year, the uh, auspicious star is, you know, there's a auspicious star in the Northwest. And this is how everyone needs to activate that. That is dangerous books and articles that only talk about the annual can actually do more harm than good. And I'll come back to this point in a bit. Because right now I'm gonna go into the third level, which is the monthly energy. Now, oh, I didn't bring my calendar, but I, I should have. <laughs> the Because honestly, people, energy is constantly moving it never stays stagnant. So it changes in feng shui, it changes every 20 years, it changes every year, it changes monthly, it even changes daily and changes hourly. But that's for the more advanced, more uh, obsessive, <laughs> fun, you know, truly obsessed feng shui enthusiasts. Maybe you want, you can do your flying star based on uh, daily and uh, hourly, but that that can get a little, you know, a bit of a mind F, right? But monthly energy. And so that's the three levels of energy. But how do you use them together? Now that you know there's the permanent energy, there's the annual energy, there's the monthly energy. What are the differences? You guys feel free to let me know what your questions are. What are the differences with all those? How do you use them together? Now, I will, this is a bit of a, sneak peek <laughs> i'm letting you guys know that i'm starting my feng shui 2019 registration which is my annual online event where i look at your let me see if i can get this right <laughs> i look at your permanent energy for period seven and period eight if there's enough people in period six i might look at period six as well okay and then i look at the annual energy and how it affects the permanent energy and vice versa. How does the permanent energy affect the annual energy and how does the annual energy affect the permanent energy? In my annual feng shui webinar, whoever's been in uh, or registered in my annual webinar before, say, you know, put up your hand or something. <laughs> in my annual online webinar and Correct me if I'm wrong, but not many information is based on this. 
I look at the annual energy and I tell you how to place based on the year while also I don't keep my eyes off of your permanent energy. So meaning you don't have to be a certified feng shui consultant like me to know the permanent energy to make sure that your annual placement is kosher to the permanent energy. Because for instance, this year, the auspicious star, right, is in the Northwest. And all those articles that only talk about the annual energy will tell you to activate the Northwest. However, if there are homes in period seven and period eight where the Northwest permanent energy is actually negative, you activating the annual energy can actually land you into deep, hot water, boiling water. <laughs> You're gonna hurt yourself. Okay? And some people ask me, Safrina, if, if I can only choose one, which one do I remedy? Which one works faster? In all honesty, actually, the monthly works faster. If we're looking at all three levels, permanent, annual, and monthly, the monthly has a faster impact. You see things shift much faster with the monthly. So how do I remedy that? How do I serve and support you guys, making sure that none of the energetic uh, changes fall through the cracks? I have to say, my annual online event also takes care of the monthly because I have the uh, calendar, don't I? I have the annual calendar and every month I tell you guys where, where and how the energetic, uh, energetic changes happen and how on a basic level you can remedy it based on a monthly basis. So look at this. True classical feng shui needs to take into consideration the time factor. You cannot just feng shui your home 10 years ago and walk away. You need a lot of my clients, which is why end of the year I'm very busy. Many of my clients, they come back to me to do an update for the annual um, placements for their home. Sure, the main work is done when I do the first consult, when, when I look at the permanent energy. Every year, we just do little changes, little updates to update them to the annual. But if doing a private consultation is not an option for you, then that's the reason why I built my an annual online event the way that I've built it, in that we, t we concentrate on the annual because it is important. It does move fast. Okay, especially the number five. The number five is gonna be in the Southwest next year. Mothers or people who are born in the year of the monkey, born in the year of the goat, we're gonna uh, be hit with the number five. Even though annually that starts in February, the Chinese calendar starts in February or the feng shui calendar starts in February as well. The number five actually takes hold around October, November. It really does. It's very malevolent. So that's part, also part of the reason why I do my webinar end of October to get to give you guys November and December to start remedying everything. So when we concentrate for um, the annual, so on the online webinar, I want you guys to focus. I help you guys to focus on the annual, like really memorize the energy of the annual. But I take care of the permanent energy for you guys. Meaning I will suggest the annual placements while also keeping in mind permanent energy for all the facings for period seven and period eight. And then for the, those of you guys who want to step it up into in your feng shui placements, you have my annual um, uh, feng shui and astrology calendar that has the monthly energetic charts you can follow that. Of course, you can get the chart elsewhere. You can get it online as well. But um, but you, it doesn't matter where you get your monthly chart, as long as you do the monthly placements properly. And so this, my friends, is how feng shui needs to be done. This is the optimal way of doing your feng shui placements. Is it a lot of work? Maybe, but do you really want to be spending time, spending money on the wrong placements that don't give you results? Even the monthly placements. Those of you guys in my manifesting code, you get my monthly updates too, right? Above and beyond the calendar. Those are uh, my, my members in manifesting code. Also, 
on a monthly basis, I give placement recommendations. Again, even actually for this month, I did period six, period seven, period eight for all the 24 directions in the, in the uh, Flying Star Compass, all the 24 mountains. I do the monthly placement recommendation for that. And this is when people who have done feng shui for years and years and years and not see results, when you finally do your placement based on the time factor, based on all, preferably three levels of energy, if not at least the annual and the permanent. At the very least, you need to do the placements based on the annual and the permanent energy done together, not separate, okay? Feng Shui really does work, you guys. It just takes a bit more work it is a little bit more confusing. And maybe that's part of the reason why classical feng shui is not as mainstream as fast food feng shui. Because fast food feng shui really just caters to people who want that instant gratification. Oh, I feng, I decluttered my house, I feng shui my house. That's not feng shui. Oh, I put like my vision board in a certain place. That's great, that's law of attraction. That's not feng shui. Oh, I made, um, I made sure I want to attract relationships, so I'm gonna have, you know, two nightstands, two bedside tables, two pillows, two whatever, everything in twos. That's great. Again, that's more law of attraction. That's not feng shui. Because they don't consider the time factor. Are you guys starting to get where your feng shui mine needs to be what track you need to be on your feng shui eyes what you need to be watching out for uh seven asks should you do permanent if you're moving in a year i would still do it especially if your especially if your uh important areas like the kitchen the door your entrance and your bedroom if it's in the southeast or the southwest or um, even Northwest, part of Northwest, yeah, you still need to watch out. So it's, you know, and I don't know if you've been in my annual webinar, but honestly, doing your uh, annual webinar, most of the things you can just bring it with you. So once you move, you just bring the stuff with you. You can use it in the new place, right? So a lot of the things uh, you can use over and over again. So no, you don't have to replace your feng shui placement objects every year. That's just a cash grab. I have a wind chime that I had for maybe seven years and it finally broke. <laughs> okay, you don't have to refresh your feng shui objects. And talking about feng shui objects, you don't need, like a lot of the stuff that you need, you can get in regular stores. You can get in Salvation Army. You can get in a whatever. You can borrow, you know, you can maybe have someone donate it to you. These are things that are easily, easily, purchased or you know easy for you to um easy for you to get uh katya is asking when you are going to do the 2019 webinar registration is actually going to open in two days so on thursday i will start registr taking registrations um so you guys keep an eye out i will put the registration page on my feng shui and prosper page so those of you guys who are going to be watching this on youtube you go to my <laughs> I will be putting the uh, link there as well. Um, last year, I had fast action, uh, fast action pricing for the first 200 people. Honestly, I thought it was gonna take two weeks for me to see all those 200 seats be taken. It got sold in 48 hours. <laughs> this year, I'm extending the uh, fast action pricing to 300 people, just so, um, and just so more people can come in with the with the lower pricing before I uh, before I uh, increase the pricing just by a little bit, but um, this this video really is again out of the me thinking. I talked about the three levels of energy almost in every video, and I still get questions about it. So I wanted to do a, a specific video on that so that you guys in one place you guys can see again i'm gonna bring this up here okay permanent energy annual energy 
monthly energy, okay? This is the trifecta of energy that you need to look for, okay? Victoria is asking, what if I have two homes, province during weekends and in city during weekdays, do I have to do both? Preferably, yes. Preferably, yes. Because even in the one that you are only there in the weekends, you, you still want to protect it from being burned down. You want to protect it from being broken into, right? So uh, even your rental home, if you have your main home and then you have a, you know another location that you rent out, I know it's hard to feng shui a place where the tenants are there, but there's still certain things that you can do, right? Because again, you don't want the tenants to lose their job and then they can't pay you or you don't want tenants who are argumentative with you or don't listen to your you know your guidelines or your requirements you don't want you know you don't want tenants to fall ill as well because it's it's karma right if you're able to if you know there is a way to build a healthier more supportive environment even for people other than you you're helping them out right and you know and then it's what you give is also what you get i have someone asking me well if i if i help my tenants feng shui the place and they get a promotion and they move away because now they can they can afford better then you know i was kind of joking but not really joking i said well if if you have a place that helps them with their career then that's also a good deed in a sense, right? Sure, you have to keep looking for a tenant, but it is still a good deed. And even with feng shui, when you feng shui your, your place that you're renting out, it will be easier to rent out as well, right? So um, that's where I come from. So for you guys, how many of you guys, tell me this, how many of you have not heard of uh, the three levels of energy done together? How many of you have not heard that? Maybe you guys have heard of the period one, the permanent one. Maybe you guys have heard of annual, but have you guys heard of doing placements based on all three? I'm not saying I'm the only one saying it. It would be great if other people say it as well. <laughs> I'm kind of tired to, to have to be the, you know, the, the big um, mouthpiece here, right? Uh, Katya, if you change the flooring and siding of your door, does this change the permanent energy of the house? Not so much. It's more the roof. Um, and on the register, th thank you for that point though, by the way, um, for Feng Shui 2019, once, once, I, uh, once doors open on Thursday, uh, I will still have the same bonus webinar. So the main event is going to be end of October, but I have bonus webinars. One is my inner Feng Shui for money. People really, really loved that, um, where we do the inner Feng Shui stuff. Okay, the energy healing around your blockages around money. Bonus webinar number two is your um, inner feng shui for relationships. Again, we may want relationship, we may do our feng shui to attract relationships, but if there's internal blockages or mindset, fears and worries around, around intimacy or passion or whatever, then the uh, bonus webinar number two is going to uh, address that. There's bonus webinars to help you with determining the period. So for instance, someone like Katya and say, well, I did renovations, but I'm not sure which period I am. Then you can actually email me your questions and I will help you determine which period you are. Because if you get your home period wrong, then everything else is wrong, right? Or if you get your compass wrong, then everything else is wrong as well. Um, and there's bonus webinar number four, where if you're not sure about your facing, the facing of your home, because 95% of the time, the facing of a home is very straightforward. It's where the front door is, you know, but there's the additional 5% where, you know, it could be a little, a bit of a gray area, right? So again, you send me your layout, you, you know, in private, you can email me your address so I can take a look on Google Earth and I'll let you know, okay, this is actually the facing of your home. So this is where you need to take your compass reading. And, uh, and then there's another bonus webinar on demarcating layout. Now, the school that I am, I am from the lineage of Grandmaster Tan Yang Wu. 
Again, in the English-speaking feng shui world, the name Grandma uh, Grandmaster Tang Yang Wu doesn't flip a switch. But in in the Chinese-speaking feng shui world, or at least the ones who know about classical feng shui, Grandmaster Tan Yang Wu, which is my feng shui ancestor, uh, has been known to be the one that really opened the way for a lot of uh, more, um, I should say, like the feng shui consulting industry uh, in the 1900s, early 1900s. And so in the lineage that I'm in, we demarcate the layout a little bit differently. Again, some homes are very straightforward to demarcate, others are a little bit more complicated. So for that webinar, the bonus webinar where you demarcate the layout, you send me your layout and we will go over one by one and then we'll demarcate it for you. And then all that builds to the main event where we will go through your annual placements. Again, taking into consideration your permanent energy. So this is a labor of love for me, but I, I, you know, which I started in 2014, my very first uh, annual webinar. And I see the light bulb moments. I see the changes. I see the results. I see the shifts and transformation that uh, people get from that. And so, it is definitely something that I look forward to. I know uh, some of you guys have already been asking me about that as well. So, um, so yeah, classical feng shui works if you work it right. And hopefully I am one of the many teachers that will guide you on, uh, on this journey. So, um, hello Terry, hello Hamad, welcome, welcome. Unfortunately, I will be ending this now. It is very hot where I am. I am sweating in my solarium. Hello, Selena. Um, so I will be, uh, what is that button? I'm not sure, oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, hopefully that was, um, that was useful. For you guys especially the ones who are very 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 new to classical feng shui this is really my dears this is really how feng shui should be done and hopefully if you've never joined me in my annual webinars before you will watch out for the uh, registration page which i will share on thursday again i am extending uh, early bird pricing for the first 300 people it may sound like a lot but do not sit on it. Because last year I had um, fast action, uh, early bird pricing for the first 200, that went in 48 hours. So I don't think 300 seats is gonna take that long uh, to sell as well. So don't take your sweet time with that if you wanna save a little bit of money. All right, people, thanks so much for watching. Oh, if you know of anyone who would resonate with this, like if you know someone who's still doing fast food feng shui and you want, you know, maybe you want to share this video, feel free to share it with your friends and family or anyone who might resonate with this. All right, everyone, take care. Bye.